live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 11 p.m. And we are on storm watch tonight, taking a live look at the radar. Rain has arrived in Southern California's burn areas. And as you can see, it's already starting to come down in some parts of Southern California. This video was just taken in Oxnard. The system began moving through Ventura County a short while ago. That's right, and Sky 2 is live over the rain in Topanga Canyon, where Stu Mandel starts our team coverage tonight. Stu. That's right, and woo, look at this, it is raining out here. Now we've been following this rain, we've actually, since about the Thousand Oaks area, we've been staying with this one cell. Now we're out over by Topanga Canyon. Rain is definitely coming down. The burn area is big concern, that's for sure. Roadways are getting wet. Hopefully everybody's already made their drive for their holiday travels, but you can see the rain definitely coming down, and this is just the beginning edge of it, so it really makes you wonder what's in store. Live in Sky 2, following the rain in the Topanga Canyon area, Stu Mandel, back to you two in the studio. And we have team coverage of the rain tonight. Let's get right to Garth Kemp, who's tracking it all. Garth? Yeah, Pat, while we were watching a warm front starting to move through the area that's hooking up at the cold front that's still not going to be through L.A. County till about 4 o'clock in the morning, but we have picked up one flood advisory. These are urban flood advisories. This means flooding in the street areas up towards Santa Barbara. They've been getting a half to three-quarters of an inch of rainfall an hour up there, less as you come down towards the south. Let's get the Doppler radar, show you what's going on. You can see the activity mainly up to the north right now, but we are starting to move a little bit moderate to heavier rain in towards the Malibu area. This is still below rainfall threshold of a half an inch an hour for flash flooding. That being said, though, as you get a little closer in towards Malibu, some moderate rain getting to move on here. That member will help some debris flow, minor debris flow happening, and a little bit of topsoil coming down from where all the burn happened, of course, with the ash. It will help that to lay down as well. But we are watching this a little clearing just behind it there. So the Woosley fire and the Hill fire right now, the first to be hit by this, this is prefrontal rain. The heaviest of the rain still to come between now and about 4 o'clock in the morning as it continues to move through that area. You're seeing some light showers in through Santa Monica, Culver City, downtown, all the way into Beverly Hills, Hollywood as well. Sunset Boulevard, the west side, pretty much scattered all over through the 110 as well as East L.A. We'll show you much more coming up in just a little bit. It's already wet out in the western part of the area, though. Pat, Jeff, back to you, too. All right, Garth, thanks. And it could be a sleepless night for the people in the Woolsey area where they are very worried about rain that could cause those mudslides. And our CBS 2's Tom Waite continues our team coverage. He's live in Malibu with the situation there. Tom? And just as Garth was doing his report, Pat and Jeff, the rain has picked up here in Malibu. Some good news, though. In just the past few seconds, I spoke with a member of the fire department who says they haven't had any issues yet so far as they are monitoring all the rainfall here in Malibu. Take a live look. You can get a better sense of how hard the rain is falling out here. It's a moderate rain right now, but it's steady. And as you said, it's going to be a sleepless night for folks in the burn areas. Keith Heinsarling is spending the night before Thanksgiving filling sandbags. It's the second time in two weeks he fears the prospect of losing his home. Probably be okay, and I don't think it's going to rain too much, but better safe than sorry. Filling the bags is a lot of work, but Keith is keeping perspective. I'm just happy that we have a house to put the sandbags for because a lot of places just down the street, our neighbors, they lost their house. These two friends filled a bunch of sandbags, only to be turned back from Rebecca Carpenter's home on Decker Canyon, which is still closed. So we're worried about my house because when the rain comes, like, I don't know what's going to happen because our hill was burned. It's kind of a bummer that we couldn't get there, but hopefully it doesn't rain too hard. You know, we can get back up there. As some neighbors prepare for rain, others are dealing with the unthinkable looters who targeted evacuees. This security video shows two men who ransacked a beachfront home in Malibu, taking $1 million worth of jewelry and collectibles. The stunning crime has the homeowners seeking justice. We just couldn't understand how that could happen. I mean, this place is under lockdown. I mean, it's sickening that this type of you know, events happen during disasters. And another live look at the rain falling here in Malibu. Authorities, of course, are taking all of the precautions they can to make sure if there are debris flows that they're able to catch it and divert it away from homes. We'll, of course, be monitoring the situation and bringing you the very latest. Reporting live in Malibu, I'm Tom Waite, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Tom. The Bay Area is trading smoky skies for wet weather. The rain was a welcome relief to Northern California, which has been dealing with unhealthy air quality from the campfire in Butte County. But there is a worry about mudslides in the campfire area as well. 
We have breaking news uh, out of Palm Springs. A brush fire is burning near the Palm Springs aerial tramway. In fact, 40 people had to evacuate the mountain. The fire is burning about a half mile south of the base of the tram. Among those evacuated were guests and restaurant employees. Palm Springs firefighters uh, are working right now to get that fire put out. Well, we are hours away from Thanksgiving, and even at this late hour, there's still gridlock at LAX. This is a live look at cars still backed up near the central terminal area. CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen is live at the airport with the last minute holiday travel rush. Jeff? Well, Pat and Jeff, the rain has been falling here for the past hour, and we all know how that can affect traffic here in Southern California. Right behind me is where travelers can pick up a Lyft or an Uber. But earlier, when we were driving through the terminals here, we noticed a lot of people being very impatient. Many were laying on their horns. Right now, this is the look at the traffic at the upper level, and we can tell you it is far worse down below. Tonight, car horns reverberated through the lower part of Terminal 7 at LAX, where anxious drivers jockeyed for position to get to their Thanksgiving reunions. People at rideshare pickup spots had to be patient after facing challenges like Lillian Fan. It's like the most horrific traveling day. I ran through security and barely made it. Liz Santini came in from Fort Bragg in North Carolina while her husband is deployed. She traveled with a four-month-old, so keeping Big Brother occupied was key. I made sure he had a million snacks. I downloaded a ton of shows and movies on the iPad. We haven't seen him for a while. The crew falls drove up from South Orange County to pick up their son who's coming home from college in Oregon. His flight was delayed by nearly four hours. So we're like, let's go catch a movie. Once they got back on the road, they faced traffic coming into LAX. I just put my head down and let her drive. <laughs> it's very bad. It's, uh, it's complicated. Even rideshare drivers struggled with the traffic, which is why Sanat al got this request from a relative who came to pick them up. They told me to go up to the departure level because it's less traffic and it's easier to get picked up. The airport says that today is the third busiest in the 11 day holiday period. Number two will be this Sunday and topping the list will be the upcoming Monday. For now, we are live at LAX. Jeff Nguyen, CBS 2 News. Jeff, thanks very much. It is also busy in the Inland Empire tonight where people are hitting the road as well. Traffic has been crawling as people are heading to their holiday destinations. Some of the drivers say their regular commute time doubled or tripled today. We talked to some who said that the, uh, the day before Thanksgiving just seemed extra frustrating when they got on the freeway. Traffic in California, especially in the IE on that 210, was horrible tonight. Just getting a 14-mile ride took me about 45 minutes. Remember when the 210 used to be the answer to the problems? Caltrans is also expecting the traffic to get worse as the storms move in overnight. Well, if you're gassing up at Beaumont for your trip, don't confuse this special pump for gas. Some people have mistakenly used the new DEF or diesel exhaust fluid pump to gas up, but it's not a fuel. It is used to clean emissions from diesel engines. Tow companies have seen at least 20 cars end up with serious engine damage, so be careful of that. A 17-year-old young man has been arrested in connection to the double homicide of two sisters in Westchester. Those sisters, Sierra Brown and Unique Sauvignette, were shot. Their apartment was then set on fire. The LAPD says that 17-year-old was a boyfriend of one of the sisters. The magical Christmas caroling truck is slamming the brakes on its traditional ride. For the first time in 34 years, carolers and dancers won't be dazzling San Fernando Valley streets. CBS 2's Rachel Kim is live in North Hollywood to tell us what happened. Rachel. Well, Pat, over the years, thousands of people have lined this street here in Toluca Lake and many others in this area to watch the caroling truck go by. Well, tonight, many are sad and surprised to hear that the tradition is over. For the past 34 years, the Christmas caroling truck rolled along the streets of North Hollywood, Toluca Lake, and Burbank, spreading holiday cheer. The sights and sounds from the decked out 62 foot tractor trailer and costumed carolers were what many looked forward to this time of year. It's just a nice thing in the neighborhood, brings everybody together. This was special to our neighborhood, and it sort of set us apart from everybody else. 
Tonight, many were shocked to learn that organizers have put the brakes on the caroling truck. But we've been told this is a result of sexual misconduct allegations against the man who's behind the operation. I'm upset to hear that that something like that happened and I'm, you're hearing about it so much now. We're not going to use the man's name because he hasn't been charged with any crime. He is, however, named in a statement released by the Church of the Living Word in North Hills. They say, quote, we take seriously any reports of mistreatment of our staff, congregation, or visitors within the Living Word Fellowship of Churches, and we strongly condemn sexual harassment of any kind. My thoughts go out to people involved in the church or anyone affected. The church also said in their statement that the man in question will no longer be involved in any aspect of leadership and will not be allowed back into the church. We tried speaking with the man, but he did not wish to speak with us. Reporting live tonight in Toluca Lake, Rachel Kim, CBS 2 News. All right, thank you, Rachel. Well, tonight the FDA says California is the most likely source for the E. coli outbreak linked to romaine lettuce. Nine people in Southern California, 23 in the rest of the U.S., and 18 in Canada have been sickened by in recent weeks. Yesterday, the CDC told Americans to stop eating all romaine lettuce. Today, the FDA said it still has yet to pinpoint the source of the outbreak, but that it's likely associated with end-of-the-season harvests in California. Now, last-minute scramble is on. A lot of people are still grocery shopping just hours before Turkey Day. You know who you are. <laughs> and you know you have plenty of company at those stores. Yeah, there were long lines at the cash registers, and CBS 2's Crystal Cruz is live at the Handy Market in Burbank with some late shoppers. Crystal? Hi, Pat. Yeah, the Handy Market definitely came in handy for lots of people today. They were out here uh, looking for their pies, and we even found some people looking for their pot. It's a big deal in my family that I'm actually cooking. That's because last minute shopper Dale Riggs rarely uses the kitchen. I, I don't come home and cook. Nobody has time for cooking? No, I never have. The handy market in Burbank busy with shoppers, some sent here by the wifey. What did she say? <laughs> Where's the pumpkin pie? Man, that's like a necessity, right? No, that's right. That, that, was, that was a sin. Others brought their better halves to the store. These two already fighting, and the holiday is hours away. My oh. wife is upset that I bought some turkey. <laughs> what, what do you mean she's upset? <laughs> she, she, well, we have a turkey tomorrow, obviously. It's Thanksgiving, but I bought some turkey. I had a little hankering, and it's handy market, and life is good. It's, we're going to have leftovers on Friday, Yeah. and he's going to say sick of turkey, and I'm going to kill him. And then there's the pot shop. Business is good as people try to relax this holiday with a side of marijuana to go with those mashed potatoes. Getting ready to go see the family, so <laughs> you need a little something to relax you down, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a nice treat to go around, right? That's what I'm bringing for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Anybody want one? <laughs> And if you get the munchies, the handy market is open tomorrow uh, until I believe 3 o'clock. Live in Burbank tonight, I'm Crystal Cruz. Back to you in the studio. Times are changing. All right, Crystal, thank you. The nation's oldest Pearl Harbor survivor, Ray Chavez, has died. He was 106 years old. Chavez had just finished his shift sweeping for mines when the first bombs dropped in Pearl Harbor. He spent the next nine days on continuous duty in and around that base. Chavez retired from the Navy in 1945. Despite his age, he traveled to Washington, D.C. in May, where he was honored by President Trump. He grew up in San Bernardino, but spent the final part of his life in San Diego. Well, each year, the black and white movie classic, It's a Wonderful Life, eases us into the holiday season. Its director, Frank Capra, also created celluloid magic with movies like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. As CBS 2 Susie Sa tells us, tonight his family shares recently unearthed Capra treasures written by the Hollywood legend himself. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. I ran the projector when we ran It's a Wonderful Life. When every Christmas Eve, we ran it. Tom Capra, son of legendary film director Frank Capra, watches his dad's holiday classic, It's a Wonderful Life, every year. Warp, frustrated, frustrated old, old man, man, Mr. Potter. 
When six-time Academy Award winner Frank Capra wasn't directing iconic movies, he and wife Lou would escape the Hollywood grind to go fishing in California's High Sierra at their cabin purchased in 1948 on majestic Silver Lake. It's surrounded by humongous mountains and they just go straight up and there's snow on the top. I mean, it's just a gorgeous place. Tom recalls at the end of his dad's career, Capra typing away in the cabin's master bedroom. I mean, he just shut the door and we'd hear the typewriter going for like four hours. That was, you know, then he'd go fishing. When Frank Capra passed away in 1991, keepsakes like his Oscar statues were divided amongst his children, along with this box that went around the world with Tom and his wife, Chris, until they opened it in 2012. I had this shredder next to me and I said, what is this? And I, he goes, oh, it's something my dad wrote. And I said, I started reading out loud and I said, oh, I think I, think I better keep this one. What they uncovered were two Frank Capra manuscripts like Hollywood Capra. had never set eyes on. They're both so different. That's a novel and this other one is pretty much a true story. Yeah. Cry Wilderness is a little guy versus the establishment novel that takes place in Capra's real-life cabin community about 25 miles from Mammoth. Six noble peaks brush the sky. Capra charmingly writes himself into the story in the first person as the Hollywood producer narrator. So I said to hell with Hollywood and anyway trout season was opening and I have a wife Lou who will fly right out of a beauty shop in the middle of a hair due to go fishing. The writing and characters are quintessentially Capra-esque. And you have compassion for them. Oh God, I wish I could tell you, but I don't want to ruin the book for people, no. The second manuscript titled Night Voices is Capra's personal wonderful life when he felt Hollywood turned on him at the end of his career. He believes he spoke to the devil one night when he was sitting up at the lake house drinking too much and that the devil tried to convince him to write movies without values. But Capra stuck with values, something we still crave decades later. Well, Capra's true life story, Night Voices, is still a manuscript and is being considered for a film. Cry Wilderness is on bookshelves right now. The introduction is written by actor-director Ron Howard, who says the novel is genuine, intriguing, and wonderfully Capra-esque. Well, we've got to go back to our top story, the rain. As we stay on Stormwatch, the system makes its way through the region. Yep, let's go back up to Stu in Sky 2. He's over at Canoka Park right now. Uh, Stu, starting to call you rain, Stu. That's right. It is quite a bit of rain, and, you know, this is basically just the beginning as we understand it. A lot of rain out here at Canoga Park area. We've been listening for some traffic accidents. We heard something going on on northbound 5. Might be an area you might want to avoid. Uh, something about a big rig into a center divider out there, so there's going to be some slowing and some blockage. But we're over here in the Canoga Park area that's very close to the West Valley. We do know there was a lot of burn there on those hillsides. All that vegetation gone. We're keeping an ear on that as well. But we have not heard of any incidents with mud slides or flows out here in the West Valley area. Right now, though, the rain definitely still coming down, and this definitely seems like it's going to be a serious storm. Live in Sky 2 over Canoga Park. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you guys in the studio. Stu, thanks. It's also raining in Ventura County right now. This is a live picture of the rain coming down in Oxnard. Well, Garth Kemp has been tracking the storm all day. Well, Stu, you would know if this is a st serious storm or not. Yeah, well, we'll take you out towards the pier. If we're not yet towards Santa Monica, starting to move in the rain to that area. Let me move you guys on. Let's get off these shots. Let me show you what's happening right now. They're the clouds in the downtown Los Angeles, 59 degrees, low 60s, upper 50s through most areas right now. I want to show you, first of all, what's going on up in Santa Barbara because they've been getting rainfall rates at about a half an inch an hour. That has put street flooding into effect up into the Santa Barbara area. I know people are still making the break up there. Be careful driving up that way. Of course, Thomas Fire up that area as well. They are picking up street flooding, just meaning it's not getting down the gutters quick enough, so you'll run into that. You'll hydroplane. Be careful. The good news for us is we're not seeing flash flood watches anywhere in our burn areas. That does not mean we won't see sliding throughout the area. We'll probably see something affected on uh, up by uh, the canyons, up to Canaan, uh, Topanga Canyon, Decker Canyon, all the way uh, over to uh, PCH. 
because there's a lot to slide there. Now, it'll be a minor debris, debris flow if we stay like this, but there's rock. You know how it gets up there by Wainimi, that whole area. That's what we're keeping an eye on. Let me take you closer and show you some of the rain moving forward. We had some yellows in here, but right now these rainfall rates are under a quarter of an inch an hour when you see that kind of green, but it's just starting to move in through the area. I'll take you a little closer in through Oxford. We were just showing you that. You can see just moving across the one down towards Wainimi into Malibu right now. There's Decker Canyon, the 23 Trancus as well. This whole area Area got burned out. That's the problem. And as you get just over here and by Doom, Point Doom as well, you'll get that, you know, when you drive it just right on PCH, right by those foothills, that's where some loose debris can come down as well, is up through the canyon areas as well, through Canaan and then over through Malibu Canyon. And then we'll just get you farther south towards Santa Monica. We're starting to pick up some light showers there. Topanga Beach over towards Brentwood, right across the 405, the Sepulveda Pass. If you're making your way down for a late flight to LAX, give yourself much extra time, even with the traffic that's been going on. We're also starting to get the freeways wet. This is also spreading across the valley in the downtown Los Angeles, out towards Glendale, Burbank, San Fernando, all the way up to 5 in towards Santa Clarita, the 210, right along the foothills. You get a little bit of that lifting activity. That'll continue to put the rainfall. So, what we're looking for is tonight about 10 till 2 for the heaviest of the rain just to the north of us in northern Ventura County, and then spreading over the area. The front will come through at around 4 o'clock uh, through the morning before we start to break loose on some of this action. For our friends down in Dan, Downey, Downey, excuse me, you can see a uh, light to moderate rain there all the way down in through Torrance as well. And then it'll start to clear out as we make our way through the day tomorrow. So that's where we are right now for the burn areas. Once again, quickly, anywhere between a quarter to four tenths of an inch of rain in an hour, unless you get a thunderstorm that might beat around here every so often. But I think we're pretty good to go on that thing. There'll be minor sliding through those areas. Just a heads up for you. There's a look at the temperatures for the day tomorrow. Quickly, you guys, once we clear the morning hours out and then off to the east a little later for the IE, should actually be a very nice day tomorrow. We hope for all our friends in the burn areas that are comfortable. Don't forget them tomorrow. All right. Gar, thank you. Is it time to ditch your diet? Yeah, I know what tomorrow is, but we're not talking about that. Details on the new approach to eating that doesn't limit what you put on your plate. That's good enough.